Well, good evening. good evening. Oh, let's try it again. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship on this Christmas Eve. We are gathered in the name of Jesus to celebrate him through the medium of jazz music. And whether it's been a few hours or a whole year since you were last here, know that you are welcome here. All are welcome. Now, I want to invite you to take a moment to think about all the things that you've been thinking about all day and decide that you're going to let them go. So would you start by taking a deep breath with me? Ah, oh, forget about what happened in the parking lot and our conversation on the way here. Take your phone, make sure it's silenced, and do whatever it takes for you to be prepared for what God might have to offer you this evening. It is great to see you in worship. Will you please stand with me and we'll sing together. Join us in the responsive reading. Light of light, shine in our hearts and renew our hope. Light of light, shine in our hearts and grant us peace. Light of light, shine in our hearts and bring us true joy. Light of light, shine in our hearts and fill us with love. Joy to the world, Emmanuel has come. Tonight we light all five candles of the Advent wreath, the candles of hope, peace, 
joy, love, and finally, the Christ candle, celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior. The candle of hope reminds us that in sending Christ, God sent hope to the earth. The candle of peace reminds us that peace will one day reign. The candle of joy is a reminder that the Lord is our provider. The candle of love represents God's redeeming love for us. The Christ candle celebrates the light of the world, Jesus, born this night as a miraculous baby. Please pray with me. God of light, tonight we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We thank you for this, the most precious of Christmas gifts, and we ask that you keep the hope, peace, joy, and love of this season in our hearts, now and throughout the coming year. Emmanuel, God is with us, now and forevermore. Amen. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words 
and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Still through the cloven skies they came with peaceful wings unfurled and still. Over all the earth, it's 
those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place in the guest room. Thank you. 
Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strains Gloria in excelsis Deo Gloria Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? Gospel continues. Chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had, ha what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
will you pray with me? God in flesh, our Emmanuel. We sing, O come all ye faithful in this season. And I wonder what that means to you. Does it really matter how we come to you? O come all ye whose legs are weak or don't work. O come all ye who need a cane or a walker or a brace. Who have a limp or a pinched nerve. Who live in pain all day long. O oh, come, all those who don't feel comfortable in their clothes or even in their own skin. God with us, our Emmanuel. Can those who doubt come too? Those who have been hurt by the church, those rejected by others who profess to love you, are they welcome to worship you as they can, as they are? What about those of us who don't have it together yet? All who have a first-class ticket on the hot mess express. Does it matter the state we're in when we come to worship you? Adonai Elohim, our Emmanuel, we know that all are welcome at your manger. These are just rhetorical questions. Because by your word, you tell us, O oh, come all ye faithful, regardless of employment or age or family of origin. O oh, come all ye single and all who are childless, all ye estranged from your family, who will never walk a daughter down the aisle or hold their first grandchild. O oh, come all ye struggling to make ends meet and make those hard decisions every day. Oh, come all those told they aren't supposed to love who they love. Those whose love goes unfulfilled and those whose love has ended. God incarnate, our Emmanuel. From your manger and your cross, you tell us to come to you. All ye who are happy and content with their world and those crushed under the oppression of darkness and denied justice. All ye who will gather with friends and family for laughter and memory making tonight and tomorrow. And all those who will sit alone tonight and just find things to fill the day tomorrow. Just another ordinary Monday. Oh come, all ye who light the candles of hope and peace and joy and love. Oh come, all ye who light the candles of disquieted heart bone-deep grudges, weeping in the dark, and empty chairs at empty tables. Bid us welcome into your presence, our Emmanuel. Welcome us tonight, tomorrow, and forevermore. This we pray in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. No matter how you define the word, family and Christmas seem to go together. On this night when we celebrate the birth of a baby Jesus, a new family, it's good for us to remember that Jesus' family couldn't find a place to stay. Jesus' family, according to Matthew's gospel, uh, they were refugees in Egypt. Now, I mention that because this story of family embodied by Jesus' own family is the inspiration behind our offering tonight because 100% of the offerings we receive will go to Family Promise of Spokane and to World Relief of Spokane. Family Promise being an organization that ministers to families who are homeless, and World Relief who works to settle immigrants here in our community. So as you leave tonight, you can put something in the basket there. Remember that you are giving unto the Lord and giving for these purposes. Let's give to the Lord in our hearts. Oh 
Don't know if you are familiar with the Netflix show, The Crown. I'm a big fan. And part of it is that I'm just not familiar with royalty. It's not my background. I know that's a surprise. But it's so fascinating to see the unique and so often sordid things that go on in the royal family. Regardless of what the the individual storyline is, here's what I've learned for sure. There are certain expectations for royalty. How they expect to be treated, how they treat one another. There are rules about such things. They all know what it means to be royal. Well, you may know that the story of Jesus' birth involves royalty. The one that the prophets proclaimed as the king of kings was welcomed by wealthy magi from the east. And when they arrived, they regaled him with royal gifts. This is what it says in Matthew's gospel. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage, then opening their treasure chests. They offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So every year around this time, we gather together and we sing the song, right? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Well, of course, a a king. But if you know the story, then you know that it doesn't seem much like a a royal welcome. In fact, I would suggest that it's so familiar to many of us and often so sentimentalized that we forget that the story of Christmas is one that is so very unexpected. For example, the the story of Christmas really begins in this backwater town called Nazareth, not at the not at the center, the pulsing center of the Jewish faith in Jerusalem, but But Nazareth, a 70-mile journey from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem on a donkey. And although I have not been uh, pregnant, I have been present for pregnancies, four of them you might guess, and I'm thinking that wasn't a very pleasant ride. And then, of course, when they arrive in Bethlehem, there's no presidential suite at the inn. Remember that old phrase, were you born in a barn? Well, Jesus quite literally was born in a barn, right? And then, of course, we sing all these picturesque songs, these gorgeous settings of of the things that are happening on that beautiful and calm night, and the cattle are lowing and that really means there's a cow in the delivery room. (laughs) And of course, Jesus is born to a teenager. There's no doctor. There's no midwife, no doula, no epidural. Just calloused hands of a carpenter. So much was unexpected. And then, of course, our video tonight reminds us of a whole different part of it being unexpected. The first birth announcement was given to the shepherds. I mean, the shepherds were the original rednecks. They are people who live out in the field. They camp for a living. They smelled. They were dirty. They had just one thing to do to make sure the sheep stayed alive. Isn't it fascinating that when the announcement of the birth of Jesus came, they were the ones who got it. And what was the announcement that we heard tonight? Luke chapter 2. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Do you see that? Good news of great joy. According to the angel's message to the shepherd, Jesus' birth was good news of great joy for all the people. In other words, the story of Jesus' birth is for shepherds and for royalty. 
and everyone in between, not just for the well-mannered and well-behaved, but for all people, not just for people with good marriages or marriage married people in particular, but for all people, not just for people with wonderful careers and no drama in their family of origin, but for all the people, not just for people with good grades and good credit scores, but for all the people. Now, we expect a king to be welcomed by royalty, but by delivering the message to the shepherds, God was making a huge announcement, a proclamation that Christmas is for everyone, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how you look or where you're from, Christmas is for you. It's for all the people. And while ancient religious people and modern religious people try to define who is in and who is out, Jesus' birth gives a resounding no. Christmas is for everyone. It's for all the people. It's no surprise then that later in John's gospel we would read that God so loved the world. That means everyone, I think. You see, Christmas is for royalty with extravagant gifts and for humble shepherds who have nothing to give. Christmas is for everyone. And at Christmas, God is making an unmistakable statement. God is saying, I will leave the highest high of heaven and I will condescend to the lowest low of a manger in Bethlehem. I will go any distance. I will pay any price. I will make any sacrifice, endure any pain in order to express love to you in a tangible way. That, dear ones, is good news of great joy for all the people. Because of Jesus, you see, all are welcome. Whether you are young or old, whether you have a PhD or are working on your GED, whether you live on unemployment or live off of a trust fund, whether you go to work in a business suit and high heels or spend the day in yoga pants, whether you got your Ozempic prescription or never considered getting one, whether you like country or classical, whether you rooted for the Seahawks or for the Tennessee Titans today, because of Jesus, all are welcome. Whether you're straight or gay, cis or non-conforming, single wishing you were married or married wishing you were single, divorced and wondering if it's worth it to look at it again because of Jesus, all are welcome. Whether you're white or black, whether you're Asian or Latino, whether you are Russian or Ukrainian, whether you are Israeli or Palestinian, because of Jesus, all are welcome. Whether you're atheistic or agnostic, whether you're Buddhist or Baptist, Lutheran or LDS, Presbyterian or Pentecostal, Orthodox or Roman Catholic, Muslim or Hindu, or a card carrying none of the above. Because of Jesus, all are welcome. You see, the message the message is for the kids at Children's Hospital at Sacred Heart tonight. The message is for the families who are warm because of family promise tonight. The message is for the immigrant families that, that World Relief is trying to tell us they actually are our neighbors tonight. The message is for the in my inmates behind bars. The message is for the addicts and the homeless people that you and I might drive past tonight. Because of Jesus, all are welcome. The angel brought good news of great joy for all the people. Now the truth of the matter is that 
royalty and shepherds do not have a lot in common, but here's what they do have in common. Both of these groups of people responded to what they saw or what they heard. I mean, what would it take for less than minimum wage workers to risk the loss of their livelihood? I mean, they left the the sheep. What would it take for erudite, educated, star seers to travel such a great distance and take so much preparation that it would take two to three years to get to the place where they met Jesus for the first time? It wasn't just the spectacular angels and stars. It was the hope that maybe the message was true. Now, to be clear, at least we know in the announcement made to the shepherds, their, their, response, their response was fear. It wasn't joy. They were terrified by what we heard. But that is what spiritual exploration is about. When you make that step to pursue this God coming in Jesus, it is frightening cool thing is that the shepherds, despite their fear, they acted when the angels, were told, had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place. Magi from the east saw a star and they followed it. Frightened shepherds get a message and they, know, they go now that you have been reminded of the story. Dear friends, what will you do? Because when it comes to Jesus, you just need to know all are welcome. Will you please pray with me? Our gracious God, you've told us that when we seek you with all our heart, that you will be found. So thank you for coming to us in Jesus. Thank you for initiating the journey. Help us, oh God, each of us here, to respond with a journey toward you. For we pray in the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Lord. 
May the light of the Christ of Christmas be yours. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this night and forevermore. Amen. Merry Christmas. Bye.